Welcome to What's Trading with Tire Review. I'm Maddie Weiner, and I'm here with Bill Caldwell, Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Continental Tire of the Americas. Bill, welcome to the show. Hi, Maddie. Good to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Um, so I, I wanted to start out. I know um, SEMA got canceled this year, and we see you guys at SEMA. And uh, Continental usually hosts an extreme racing experience there. So uh, can you kind of give me some insight into, you know, does the company have any other plans to connect with those consumers and dealers who you guys, you know, typically see at the show? Yeah, um, it's a great example of our current times. Yeah, we really enjoy going out to SEMA uh, for two reasons. One is the event you mentioned. We love to get people in cars on our tires and, and show them uh, a good time uh, and engage them is a big part of SEMA for us, but I think customer contact as well. Uh, we have customer meetings, we host a reception, et cetera, is a big part of uh, maintaining our relationships and, and connections to our customers. So we will certainly miss that this year. Um, I would say on the other side, the current environment has forced us into different habits in order to stay connected with our customers. So I would say in the absence of the face-to-face -face meetings, uh, particularly early on, we would schedule quite frequent meetings with most of our top customers to, to stay connected in a, in a relatively dynamic environment. So I feel pretty well that we have um, other ways of staying connected other than SEMA would provide. Uh, we will really miss the ride and drive or that those activities. Um, to be honest with you, we're missing those everywhere because it's a big part of how we try to market uh, market our brand. Uh, but the team is finding other ways. You know, digital and online is a big um, alternative now that simply fits to a lot of people being at home in front of their computer screen. So we're trying to find other ways to connect via that avenue. Um, we activate a lot around uh, some of our sponsorships as well, and you can't do that the same way either. Uh, but the team's finding creative ways. We're hosting online parties. Uh, for MLS, we're even having drive-ins where uh, people can drive in with their cars and watch the game and we're hosting in that way. So the team's being really good at trying to find ways to adapt, uh, to, to stay connected, even if it's not in the way we used to do that. That's great to hear. Um, and I know a lot of people are just finding, like you said, just alternate ways to, to stay connected. Um, yep. And some of the uh, things you're doing with MLS sound, sound pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, I, I, wanted to yeah, I think it's challenged the creativity with with not a lot of time to plan, yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure, yes. Yeah. So, so I wanted to go back um, to, I guess, last year's Continental uh, Gold Dealer meeting. You all okay. released three new products, um, the Cross Contact LX25, Terrain Contact HT, and Viking Contact 7. Okay. Um, I'm curious, how have those products been received in the market? Um, and what tire launches, what segments, um, are you guys expecting to fill coming up, uh, you know, this year and, and into 2021, excuse me, 2021? Okay. Yeah, so those three products you mentioned were big launches for us in the second half of last year. Um, very successful. I think we've gotten nice feedback on a number of different avenues. Um, the X25 is a product for crossover, which I think we all know are, is a booming segment right now. We were pretty successful there with the predecessor product, the LX20, and the good news is we've we've been able to improve the performance there. So I think we're uh, advancing the ball and continuing to, to offer a premium product. The Terrain HT is a little bit new for us with the Conti brand, a premium uh, light truck with LT metric sizes where we weren't really participating before. That's always a bit of a, um, not a challenge, but entering a segment that you're not active in is always to create some question marks, but we've been really happy with the feedback we've received. 
Uh, third party test results are really nice on that fire. So we're really positive about that as being uh, a new offer that's helping us grow in the market. And Viking Contact, quite similar, where we've uh, advanced the ball from a performance standpoint. But the great thing about that new offer is that we've dramatically expanded the size lineup. So it's much more relevant in the market for our dealers to take on, where the predecessor product was was not as broad as an offering from a size standpoint, which uh, quite honestly was a weakness for that product. So we're really happy with what happened in the second half of last year with uh, our customers taking those products on and uh, they've weathered the storm of COVID and right now they remain really uh, good performers for us. So we're very happy with those. Uh, coming up for next year, we have a big one coming up. Uh, so DWS 06, Extreme Contact DWS 06 is a, is a flagship product for us right now and we will bring its successor uh, in the first quarter of next year. That was originally planned to be launched in fall of this year. And we decided that with all the dynamics in the market right now, and quite honestly, our challenges with taking production plants down for COVID and ramping them back up, we decided that we would rather launch in a with strength than launch in kind of a wobbly environment. So we postponed that into the first quarter. Uh, we're building launch volumes now, starting here in the fourth quarter. So we're quite confident for a robust launch from an availability standpoint. And also the product will also in this segment where we were quite happy with the previous performance, we'll be able to advance the ball there as well in terms of where and performance of that tire will be a step forward from the product. This one's an important one for us because uh, you don't want to mess it up because we've been quite successful in this segment. Um, but I'm really confident the team's done a great job. So we're really looking forward to that, forward to that here in the first quarter of 2021. That sounds great and, and very exciting for you guys. We look forward to seeing that. Yeah. Um, now I know you meant you've mentioned um, you know it's kind of a crazy time obviously coronavirus uh, it, it's just a crazy time in our world so can you describe how Continental uh, has been affected by COVID nineteen how do you feel you know the company has really displayed resilience during this time Yeah I think there's uh, two avenues to look at there. The first is really internally, how are, how's the team, you know, how's the team feeling? We had to move everybody out of the office. I mean, I'm in the office right now, but most of our team is still working from home. Uh, so that's a big upheaval in the normal day-to-day -day operations. And organizationally, I think we were quite successful there with that transition. Uh, I'm a big believer that how you uh, portray uh, a challenging activity like this can somehow help define how you weather it. You can be uh, pessimistic and worried and concerned. And I think when you feel that way, the tendency is that things lean that way. Or you can be optimistic that you can weather with strength and you can, can live for a better day. We've tried to be really optimistic in the team. And I think that portrays really how we come out of this thing, which uh, I've been really proud of the team. They've been very resilient. And I think we've all carried a very uh, can-do optimistic um, mindset as we've gone through the last four or five months. So I think that's been really positive. And I'm hoping that shows itself in terms of how we've displayed ourselves externally. So from a customer engagement standpoint, we talked about that a little earlier. Uh, we didn't run away and hide. Uh, we said, okay, we need to be really proactive in finding alternative ways to engage our customers, to touch our customers. So we onboarded probably every different software program there is that a customer could have 
in terms of video conferencing like we're doing right now and the team got trained up on them and we tried to not lose any pace or frequency in terms of connecting with customers. Um, so we really tried to lean in on that side. And as I mentioned, at a higher management level, we had weekly meetings with top management of our bigger customers to make sure that we were communicating well. And on the marketing side, like we've already mentioned, we uh, kind of reset and adapt in a different in a different pathway. Uh, not doing the stuff we love to do, which is face-to-face -face activations, talking to consumers. Uh, unfortunately, we don't do that the same way, but really transitioning to these more digital and alternative ways to keep the brand out there and keep the engagement at a high level. So um, I think we've re weathered really well. And I think, uh, you know, the, the industry has recovered really well as, as well. Um, and I'm glad we took the path we did that we um, biased ourselves towards an optimistic outcome versus a pessimistic one. So things are going well now. Yeah, that's great to hear. And and for sure, optimism is always the way to go. Yeah. Um, you you were mentioning you know having meetings with some some big customers. I, I was curious. Uh, you also mentioned you know plant shutting down uh, sort of at the beginning of when everything shut down and I believe it was mid-March, um, how yep. have you guys, I would imagine the meetings were, were very helpful with customers, but how have you been able to kind of navigate those supply and demand challenges as you know things shut down pretty rapidly and things started opening, opening up pretty rapidly? Yep. I mean, that's why the frequency of communication was more urgent than it normally would be. In the normal world with our big customers, we normally have, a, I would say, a monthly alignment meeting to make sure we understood what the demand signal looked like from our customers, what they were planning so that we could plan to support that in the right way. But with the dynamics that became a weekly um, discussion, we were kind of forced or had to shut the plants down from a COVID standpoint in order to be safe and to, particularly in the early days, understand what the right protocol would be and to protect employees in the plants and in our facilities. The real challenge was when to turn them back on. And half of that is the demand signal from the customers. And half of that is the working environment in different states, there's in different countries, there's different capabilities. So we had to try to puzzle that all together. Um, the demand signal, I think even our customers were trying to understand what was to come. And what we found is that through a customer network and through our customers supplier network, we could share what we were seeing. We could share what others were seeing, and I think that helped us get ramped up um, in a better aligned way than we otherwise would be able to, because we could share um, what we were hearing from other parts of the market, and our customers could share that as well. So I think that was... Um, that was really positive, and I think actually in that time period, we gained a, a closer relationship with many of our customers than we had before, and I expect that will help us going forward as well. Uh, better alignment uh, for better, better efficiencies, and in the end, it's all about availability and fill rates and service levels, and I think we've learned some things that will help us going forward as well. Um, now, I, I wanted to ask, can you describe any changes or um, uh, happening with Continental's dealer program this year? Any changes that happened this year or maybe changes to expect in the coming year? Um, changes this year, the major changes, uh, one is we, for the gold program, we've made a available uh, secondary supply program, um, which... Um, with the complexity in the market these days, I think gold dealers are challenged sometimes. There's so many different sizes, so many different available offerings that 
a distributor is not always perfect. Yeah, as much as we try hard. Uh, and sometimes a consumer will come in, need a tire, and uh, if, if a uh, dealer can't get it from their primary distributor, we now have available to them an alternative in order to service that customer. So that was a big um, uh, capability that we turned on for gold dealers this year uh, that hopefully allows them and us not to miss a sale. Uh, that we otherwise get. Um, the second one is we expanded our credit card program a little broader than it was originally. Originally, uh, we had uh, the Continental brand was available on a uh, credit card program that we offer through our partner with uh, partnership with Synchrony. That was expanded to the general brand as well this year. So a uh, we felt that that was an offer offering that our dealers needed, regardless of which brands they're offering in their screen. Uh, it's an offering we didn't have uh, years ago that we've brought as an additional value to our customers to be able to offer credit to their customers. And with that comes the added value of we can offer an expansion of some of the consumer promotions uh, that can create more valuable value for the end consumer if they're participating together with a credit card. Um, so we are able to expand the, the, the value offer of a consumer promotion when they're using the credit card. So hopefully that comes as a, as a bigger value to some of our customers uh, and dealers. Yeah, very interesting. Very cool. Okay, now kind of along the lines of, of that, um, kind of segues pretty nicely. What, what are some trends, um, you know, from your perspective that you're seeing in the tire industry as the pandemic sort of unfolds? I know you mentioned the switch to digital, but can you maybe touch on a couple others that you've seen? Yeah, I think um, it's associated with the switch to digital. I think most people know in the industry that purchases online, you know, maybe around this 10% uh, of the total market range, slowly growing, but because you still have to get the product installed, um, certainly not tracking the way other consumer goods would. But I think um, what we weathered in the last months, we clearly saw customers with an online presence uh, for purchase uh, weathered better or saw less uh, pullback than those that didn't have that capability. So it pushed consumers towards that avenue or that channel, maybe you want to call it a little more than maybe the normal trend would have been. And those dealers who have that capability, who can offer that to a consumer, I think we're able to weather better as well. And I think that drifts from even the transactional purchase all the way to the install now. So dealers that could also with that in with that online purchase schedule and install uh, for the consumer also weathered that well and i think we've kind of accelerated accelerated now the the building of that capability in the dealer base to be able to really have that seamless transaction for the consumer where they can online handle the whole and transaction and drop their car off or seamlessly get it serviced without a really long wait time, which I think is a super value add to the end consumer. That's the wait time is probably where they see the most uh, friction in the tire transaction. And we've, I think, advanced the ball to be able to do that more seamlessly now. So that's really big. The communication we already talked about is really big in our ability to, to link the seamless supply chain between manufacturers, distributors, and dealers to hopefully eliminate that lack of availability to miss a sale. So I think we'll get better out of this, out of that. Not only the verbal communication, but the system communication. So 
more and more systems are talking to each other in order to identify the lack of products so that we can service and fill that more seamlessly. So that is a big change as well. Um, I think we've all adapted as we've already talked about with new ways to communicate. I will tell you, Maddie, uh, we yearn to get back to what it was because we really feel like tire business is people business and touching and feeling uh, and that personal interaction. While this is a reasonable substitute, I don't think it should be the replacement. Our team doesn't think it should be the replacement. We want to get back and more active. We love to show our product on vehicles performing, you know, on a track or, you know, firsthand. You can't, you can't replace that because that's how you drive your car. Um, so we're really anxious, impatient, excited to get back to that and to get back to a more face-to-face -face environment um, because that's how we like to sell tires. For sure. Oh, we are too. And I've heard that from a lot of people in the industry. Now, now I know you mentioned the, the launch of the DWS 06 coming Q1 next year. Yep. Um, are you guys planning an in-person um, type of event for that? Or can you, maybe you can't say quite yet, um, but it's we are trying out. to prepare to be able to do that because it's going to be in the first quarter. I don't think there's a great certainty right now, so we'll have some contingency plans for that. But certainly our plan, we'd like to be able to do that if we can. Um, you know, in the end of the third of the first quarter as well. Um, you know, Uvalde, Rock and Drive is a big part of how we show our product to dealers uh, and show the performance. Uh, we're very hopeful we had to cancel that here in 2020, but we're very hopeful that we're able to do that um, next year. We're planning to do that uh, next year, and that would also be an event where we can show the performance of the new product. So uh, that's what planning events right now is all about having a plan and having a backup plan. Uh, and that's a little bit how we're we're organizing and and uh, scheduling things right now. Um, Bill, last question for you. Just in general, what do you want your dealers to know about Continental during this time? Um, I'm, I'm hoping, Maddie, that they've already experienced it. So um, we've tried really hard with our team to not lose any momentum. Uh, over the last four or five months where we've weathered the storm, I would say. Uh, I hope our dealers recognize that. We've really tried to lean in versus lean back in the time period. Uh, probably this is the time period events like this are, we feel the time where probably our dealers need us more than ever. Um, and we've tried to do that, whether it's been the engagement, whether that's been special promotions or support that we've provided over that time period. Uh, I think uh, times like this is where you really test a relationship and you really test whether uh, you, can, you can step up or not. And I, and I hope our dealers have seen that we have acted that way. We've tried to use it as an opportunity to prove ourselves, maybe prove ourselves versus competition a little bit uh, in this area. We're very competitive, um, and I, I hope our dealers have seen that from us, uh, that we've tried to step up to the challenge in our support for them. And would, that would be our expectation going forward as well, that we want to have their backs because we're hoping they have our backs uh, every day in their business. So um, I feel comfortable and confident that that's how we've behaved. And I want our dealers to know that we'll continue to act like that. That's great to hear. That's awesome. Well, Bill, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the podcast and taking time out of your day to speak with me. And um, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Okay. Thanks, Maddie. And thanks to everyone out there for your continue to support. Yeah. So looking forward to a brighter future and getting out there and seeing everybody face to face.